So as I promised last week, this week we will begin IS December and start discussing some of the components of the Imperial class Star Destroyer and what makes this ship so unique. So today we're going to dive right in with the propulsion and power generation, the systems that make this whole thing work. I'm Colin and this is Sci-Fi Deep Dive. Remember, if you enjoyed this video, to head down below and hit that subscribe button. So many of us are familiar with the Imperial Class Star Destroyer and its key role within the Imperial Navy, but I wanted to do this series to cover all of the small elements that make a ship this size work and talk about things that, well, uh, that are key components of a vessel like this. So let's dive right in with the systems that drive the ship through space and power all of its many weapons and electrical systems that keep this ship in the fight. Like many ships in Star Wars, the Imperial Class Star Destroyer is powered by a hypermatter reactor, which is located directly in the center of the Star Destroyer. Actually, this globe right here, this, this nub sticking out, is actually the bottom of the ship's primary hypermatter reactor, which is tied directly to the ship's primary drive engines. This is where most of the energy driving the ship comes from, and it serves as a massive, hot, dense, basically a tiny fusion reactor uh, of... Uh, sorts and hypermatter reactors themselves are an entirely different discussion but the largest one on board one of several is located right here in the center of the vessel so the energy generated by that hypermatter reactor goes to these the ship's primary drive engines now you'll notice that there are three large engines these are destroyer one model kdy ion engines which serve as the ship's primary form of propulsion when operating in most normal conditions but you'll also notice there are four smaller engines located around those those engines are Gemin 4 ion engines. These are smaller ion engines that are intended as a backup system designed to sort of provide thrust if the main engines are disabled in combat or rendered inoperable through sheer time, as we see with, for example, the Chimera. But that single hypermatter reactor alone isn't the only thing creating power for the ship. Flanked on either side, and sort of the, the wings of the Star Destroyer here in the back, are an additional set of smaller hypermatter reactors that serve as reserve power units. They're there as a backup if the main is disabled, and as auxiliaries to sort of supplement the main's power if, in extreme situations, it's not enough. Keep in mind that this isn't just powering the ship's engines, but it's providing electricity and power for the entire ship. That's its weapons, its electronic systems, its sensors, its tractor beams, on top of the propulsion needed to push the thing through space. But even if those are destroyed, there is still a backup on the opposite side of the vessel, up here at the bow of the ship. The very front section of an Imperial class Star Destroyer forward of the ship's main hangars is entirely dedicated to a backup power plant and Basically, all the systems the ship would need to operate on minimal power should this back section be so heavily damaged that the ship can no longer function. This backup power system, as far as we know, was never used, although with the size of the Imperial Navy and the number of Star Destroyers built, it's almost certain that at some point during the Galactic Civil War or the reign of the Empire or the years after that, an Imperial-class Star Destroyer did suffer enough damage to need these reactors. But they existed nonetheless. This entire front section of the ship would be dedicated to this backup power plant, which does, by the way, include a smaller but still fairly powerful hypermatter reactor, one that, by the way, is still larger than the CR-90 Corellian Corvette that we see an Imperial One-class Star Destroyer at the Devastator capture at the start of A New Hope. So all those systems together provide power for the vessel and push the vessel through space. And while there were some modifications in between the Imperial One and the Imperial Two-class Star Destroyer's power systems, they were relatively minor, some minor changes to the engine design, but other than that, it had the same hypermatter reactors, the same reserve systems, the same backup reactors, and the same general layout with the same large components. They were really, ultimately, this is one of the few parts of the Star Destroyer that didn't undergo much of a change in between an Imperial 1 and an Imperial 2. Internally, these reactor spaces were accessible to the crew, and we actually see this in Star Wars Rebels as a vast chasm above the ship's hypermatter reactor. The entire space underneath the superstructure here was more or less hollow to allow access to that reactor space for maintenance purposes to sort of keep the ship running and keep that reactor functional, because once again, that is the beating heart of the ship, and while it does have backups, ideally you'd keep that main hypermatter reactor online, which 
by the way, since it pokes out of the bottom of the vessel, does make it an easy target for Rebel Strike Fighters attempting to disable Imperial-class Star Destroyers, a strategy that the Rebel Alliance would utilize by the time of the Battle of Endor fairly frequently. But the propulsion is just one element that keeps this ship in the fight and makes the ship so historically and militarily significant. If you'd like to learn about some of the other systems on board an Imperial-class Star Destroyer, I'll leave a link up here to a playlist I'll be putting together of all of the IS December videos covering different systems from across this magnificent vessel. And I'd like you to let me know down in the comments what systems you'd like to know more about. Is there anything on the Star Destroyer that you really want me to focus on in one of these videos? Because this is going to be my priority for most of the month of December. So seriously, if you have anything you want to know, let me know down below and I'll try to add it to the roster. And outside of IS December, if you have anything else you'd like to see me cover in Star Wars or anywhere else in science fiction, you can also leave that down below in the comments. Last but not least, if you enjoyed this video, head down below, hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the bell icon so you get notified when I upload new videos. So for Sci-Fi Deep Dive, I'm Colin, and I will see you next time.